أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وصلموا تسليما أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أنفنا ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون صدق الله العلي العظيم Brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Inshallah, today I would like to speak about these five ayahs and how it relates to our responsibility of the Imam of our time, Ajallah Faraj al Sharif. As we heard from many lectures, or many of our discussions together, the purpose, the purpose of life is what? The purpose of life is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everything with its purpose. From the little insect that we see, to the human beings that are walking around, to the things that we see, to the things that we do not see. Everything is created with a purpose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not created jinn and men except for what? Only to worship Him. Illa liya'budun. Except to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, when we look at these five verses from Surah Al-Baqarah, the beginning of these five verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us a glimpse of the purpose of the creation of the universe. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli alayhi wa sallam. Now we know sometimes in the English ver- in, in the English language, we use abbreviations. What are abbreviations for? They stand for something. There has, there, it has a deeper meaning, meaning into it. For example, let us put um, abbreviation in order to learn something. Or when we look at basketball, it has an abbreviation which, which is NBA, which stands for National Basketball Association. Now, because every time we want to speak about basketball, we don't want to say National Basketball Association. So we say NBA, right? Or when we look at NBA, Masters, Bachelors of Arts, we don't want to say to people, oh, I got my Bachelors, Bachelors of Arts every single time, or my PhD, or so forth. So they all have an abbreviation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses these abbreviations in the Quran so that we may understand. We may not know the meaning of it. For example, Alif Lam Mim. There are simple letters in the Arabic letters. Alif Lam Mim. What is the meaning of Alif Lam Mim? 
We do not know the true meaning of it or the depth of Alif Lamin. Only for only Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt Alaihi Wasallam know the true meaning and the true depth of Alif Lamin. The true meaning of Af. The true meaning of Taha. We just might know the small tafsir of it, but when we go into depth of it, we. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt alayhi wasalam, know the true depth of the meaning of these, of these certain, uh, abbreviations. Sallallahu alayhi wasalam, Muhammadin wa alayhi wasalam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi wasalam. Now, when we go to the second ayah, Alif Lameem, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي هُدَلْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Thalika, in Arabic, Thalika is for something that is far. But we have the Qur'an in between our hands, so how can it be far? How can it be pointed to something far away? Thalika al-kitab is not only the book that we have been given today. It is, uh, they are the five books, which are what? Which are what? What are the five books that we believe in? Is it only the Qur'an that I have to believe in in order for me to call myself a Muslim? What are the other books that are given? Who knows? What are the other books? Suhufi Ibrahim, right? The book of Ibrahim, the book of Musa, which is what? The Torah, the Injil, Zabur, what else? That's it? Just these four? What's the fifth? The Qur'an. I have to believe in all of these books. And to whom it was revealed to. So not only these books I have to believe in. Not only the Ahlul Bayt I have to believe in. I have to believe in all the prophets that came. And all the imams that came after. And all the successors after him. Who's the successor of Musa? Nabi Harun. Who's the, who's the successor of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa None Not other but Imam Ali alayhi salam. So now when I look into this, let us go into the third ayah where Allah says, who believe in the unseen. Is it just the jinns? Is it just the oxygen? That I breathe in? Is it just the carbon dioxide that I breathe out? These are the unseen. Is it just this? No. Do I see my prophet right now? No. Do I see Imam Ali right now? No. Do I see the Imam of my time right now? No. No. Can I see him? Am I able to see him? Is he with us? Yes, he is. Do I believe in him? Oh, I just know him by his name. I just know his name is Muhammad. I just know his name is Mahdi. But do I really see him? Do I see Allah? Imam Ali was asked, do you see your God? He, what did he reply? How can I worship someone that I cannot see? Subhanallah. Does he see with his actual eye? No. Can we see Allah with, with physically with our actual eye? No. How do we see Him? We see Him through His creations. Through His creations, we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see Him through His power. Every day and every night, we see the day, we see the nights, we see the sun, we see the moon. The sun being whom? The moon being whom? Every day we see Nabi Isa alayhi salam, the representative of Nabi Isa alayhi salam. Every day we see the light of Mahdi alayhi salam. How do we see this? The sun and the moon, they come hand in hand, one after the other. Nabi Isa and Imam Mahdi alayhi would they not come out one after another? The moon and the sun. The moon and the sun complement each other. Just like how the sun gives the moon its lights, Imam Mahdi Ajalla Farj Mashalif will come 
and give the earth its light. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stop there, number ayah 3? No, He continues on. And number 4 where He says what? He says, and believe in that which has been revealed to you. To whom? Who's you? Muhammad. That has been revealed to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu wa alayhi wa sallam. Is this it? Just, uh, just what has been revealed to Muhammad? No. Nah. Also what has been revealed before you. Meaning what? The four books that we have spoken earlier. <coughs> And what else? And be and those who are certain of the hereafter. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling me that not only believing in these five books are a must for a Muslim, but also believing and being certain of the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues on and saying what? Now remember, these are the conditions that are being put by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I want to be the ones who are pious, if I want to be the one who has awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I have to follow these conditions. Number five is what? It says, then these are the ones with guidance from their Lord. And these are the ones who shall be the successful ones. So we've seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put conditions in the four. And the five where he says, if I believe in this, then I am successful. We are the successful ones. Now, believing in the unseen. Yes, it's hard, right? It's, no, it's easy for me to say, yes, Imam Mahdi is out there. It's very easy for me to say that. But when it comes to following him with my tongue and with my actions... Brothers and sisters, this is hard. This is hard. Why is it hard? Is it actually hard? No, it's not. What's so hard about it? Oh, I have work. I have to do this. Yes, we have work. Yes, we have to take care of our family. But you know what? There's also hereafter that we have to think about. There's a saying... One of the imams has said, work for this life as you will never die, as you will live forever. But work for the hereafter as for what? As you will die tomorrow. Wow. So yes, work for this life as you will never die. But also remember the hereafter. So when I pray, let me know that this prayer might be my last prayer. That this ibadah I might do might be my last ibadah. So let me do it like it's my last. Let me pray like it's my last prayer. Let me not rush it. More can wait. My prayers cannot wait. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes, He's patient. Yes, He's the definition of patience. But why would I make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wait? But when he makes me wait, I complain. Oh Allah, I've prayed for you day and night for risk. Oh Allah, I pray I prayed for you day and night for, for you to give me kids. Oh Allah, I've prayed for you day and night for you to make me successful. But yet I can't sacrifice two minutes of my time to pray to my Lord. I can't sacrifice two minutes of my time to pray to my sustainer, to pray to my creator. Why? And then I ask, Allahumma kul walikan hujjat ibn Hassan. Oh Allah, hasten, hasten the reappearance of Imam Mahdi. But yet, I am not ready. Me, myself, I am not ready. I am not clothed with the taqwa. Of Imam Mahdi. For him to come out. Because if he was to come out. Brothers and sisters. Will we be able to take him to our houses right now? Imam. Come to my house. Oh no Imam. Come to my house. Okay. What if he was to accept my invitation? 
would I make a phone call home and tell my wife or my kids, oh, you know those DVDs that we have, those movies that we have, you know those posters that we have, the imam is coming over, put them away, hide them, the Quran, clean them, dust them off, and put them on the counter, because the, because your imam is coming to the house. My imam is coming to the house. Let Make it presentable. Would we not make it presentable? Do I have to throw away some stuff for the imam to come? Do I have to put the sajada of the prayer for him to come? Have we forgotten that he is the speaking Qur'an? Have we forgotten that the Ahlul Bayt are the speaking Qur'an? That they know the Qur'an in and out. Is it just enough for me to memorize the Qur'an? To be the al-hafiz of the Qur'an but yet not practice it? Is it enough for me just to speak the Qur'an and not, and not practice it? No. What we have to do is we have to be the example of the walking and the speaking Qur'an on earth. So when the Prophet said, Ali is with the truth and the truth is with Ali. And they will not part until they meet me on the pool of Kautha. Is there a hadith that goes into depth about this? Yes. This is narrated by Um Salama alayhi salam. Wow. 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 What does Um Salama say? She says that the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu said, Ali is with the truth and the Quran. Not just the truth, but the truth and the Quran. And the Quran is with Ali. The Quran is with whom? Ali. Because I can tell you that people can say, no, 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 this is the truth. Ali is with this truth. No, 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 no. Ali is with this truth. Nah. But Um Salama says, no. Ali is with the truth and what? The Quran. So someone cannot come claim and say, no, no, no. This is the truth. The Quran is the truth and Ali is with the truth. Right or wrong? Ali is with the truth and the Quran is with them. And they will not part until they meet Rasulullah on the pool of Kafar. So now, the twelfth Imam. Our twelfth Imam. We want to build a relationship with our twelfth Imam. How do I build this certain relationship with him? We know that he is if he was to walk in that door right now, through those doors, if he was to walk in right now, how would I greet my imam? How would my imam greet me? Would he be glad to see me? Would I be glad to see him? Oh, be like, oh my God, it's the imam of my time. Would I be able to approach him? If not, then let me right now cleanse myself so that I may clean myself, so that I may cleanse myself, so that I can meet my Imam. Just like how we cleanse ourselves in prayers. You want, do we know how short life is? Do we actually realize how short life is? Let me explain. Let, let us explain and understand how short life is. When a child is born, what is recited on the right ear? Adhan, correct? What is recited in their left ear? Iqama, correct? What is recited when we die? What is it? Salat al mayyit right? Before we pray, we do the adhan, the aqama, the salat. That's how short life is. We go into the first sujood. We get up. What do we say? Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubu ilayk. Right? We go back in sujood. What does that mean? What does this symbolize? What does this prayer symbolize? Our life 
and death. And the day will be resurrected again. So we see that when the Imam comes out, this is what I have to be ready. It's just not me reading Dua Ahad for 40 nights and me being one of the 13. The 13 soldiers. Yes, there are 13 soldiers. But who are these 13? 313, sorry. Who are these 313 soldiers? These are the 313 are the commanders of the army of Imam, Imam al-Hujjah al-Jawah al-Faraj So is it just me reading Dua Ahad and that's it? And then after the 40 nights, I go on with my life? No, I have to live the Qur'an. I have to try to be like the speaking Qur'an. Yes, there are masumins. Correct. But you know what? Human beings can be what? Higher than whom? Angels. Lower than whom? Animals. So if I, as a human being, have the ability to be higher than an angel, why do I not take that chance? If right now, if I was to go into work, if we were to go into work, and my supervisors tell me, listen, I am going to give you the company. I am going to give you the company. These are the conditions that you have to make in order for me to give you the company. Would we not fu fulfill those conditions as fast as we can so that I can have the key to the company? Will I not? Will we not do it? Of course we'll do it. But now when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, I will give you heaven. I will give you heaven. And this is the criteria that you have to meet in order to attain my heaven. How many levels in heaven is there? How many levels? Thank you. How many verses in the Quran? Now, when I, if I want to achieve those levels, what do I have to do? Memorize the Quran. Memorize every single verse, even if it's a day. Each day I memorize a verse, it will take me at least six years to memorize. So if we encourage our kids to memorize the Quran from a young age, let's say at the age of 10, by the time they're 16, they'll have the Quran, the whole Quran memorized. The age of 16, they'll have the whole Quran memorized. Now, if I start from zero, the age of six, they'll have the whole Quran memorized. If I start six, the age of 12, they'll have the whole Quran memorized. Now, what else do I have to do? I not only have to teach them that the Quran is important, but I also have to show them with the example that living the Quran is also important. That I have to be the living and the speaking Quran, just like how my Imam is. So if I want to be, and if I want my children to be the soldiers and the, amongst the 313 of the Imam Mahdi, I should teach them how to live and walk the Quran. This is one friend I have in university that he told me that every time he writes a paper, he puts the hadith of Amir al-Mu'mineen in his essays, in his thesis. How many of us are scared to do that? How many of us are scared to put the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the words of Amir al-Mu'mineen in our thesis, in our essays? Biology is not biology in Islam. P politics isn't politics in Islam. So I should be able to use these. And not only did he use them, but he also got the best mark in his class. The best mark in his class. To the point that the professors are asking him, come be my assistant. They're fighting over this one student. The professors are fighting over this one student in order for him to be their assistant. 
This is the power of Amir al-Mu'mineen. This is the power of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim as-salam. Sallallahu So now we heard a beautiful lecture, mashallah, by one of the youths. I don't know if I can even top that lecture. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Subhanallah, the, the eloquence of that lecture was beautiful. beautiful. I don't even know if I should be up here speaking. There's no way I can match that lecture. Why? Because these are the words of Amir al Mu'minin being spoken. These are not my words. These are the words of Amir al Mu'minin. These are the eloquence of Amir al Mu'minin. We have the 12th Imam with us. What would we do? He's waiting for us. He's waiting for me, not only us, he's waiting for me. He's waiting for me to be ready. This is personal, brothers and sisters. We should talk to ourselves every day. Because my Imam, my Imam, I'm not going to say our Imam. I'm going to be personal about this. I'm going to say my Imam gets my deeds every single night. Every single night my Imam sees the bad deeds that I do. And he cries. And when he comes out, would I be for him or would I be against him? Because nowadays, the truth comes out and most of us turn away from the truth. We are told to be together, but most of us turn away from each other. Why? Is it because we ang we are angry at each other? Have we forgotten the trials and tribulations that the Prophet went through? Have we forgotten that while he was doing sujood in the Kaaba, people were, were spilling camel guts on him? Have we forgotten that the rubbish thrown on the Prophet? And yet, he hasn't he hadn't got upset, not even once. He can easily have done a dua, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have destroyed them all. Did not the Quran come down? And say that we will, we could we could have destroyed all of you if we would have wanted, and brought a nation better than you. Does not Allah Subhanahu wa Taala speak about this in the Quran? Yes, He does. So when we want to get ready for the Imam of our time, if I want to get ready for the Imam of my time, then you know what? Let me wear the clothes of taqwa, the pious. Let me be aware. Let me have awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everywhere I go. Because is it possible for me to be perfect? Is it possible for us to be perfect? Yes, it is possible for us to be perfect. We're just telling ourselves no. Why? Because from a young age, we've been raised up with the word no. No, don't do that. No, don't touch that. No, don't touch that. No, don't do this. No, don't go there. Six years of our life, two years of our life, we'll be hearing the word no. So every time we think that we can reach perfection, we're like, no, I can't reach it. No, I cannot reach this. Why? Because we have been embedded. And this word, no. With this word, no. So this word, no, has been implemented in our minds day and night, day and night. No, 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 no. So we think that it is impossible for us to be higher than angels. Yes, there are certain things we can't reach. And these are the states of the imams and the prophets. Yes, the states we cannot reach. This state are for certain individuals. And these are for the Prophet and the Imams alayhim salam. But for us, are angels not perfect? Do, do angels make mistakes? No. no. Why? It's because they're created without desires. Why is it that human beings can be higher than them? It's because we're created with desires. We're created with two things. Even if we were to go into biology, we're, be, we're able to prove that human beings are made out of two elements. And they have these two elements in them. Which is what? 
which is dirt, which is clay, the elements of clay, we have this in us, and the elements of water, we have this in us. Even biology proves this. So why is it that when it comes to obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who have authority over us, we tend to go away. But when our boss are looking over our shoulder, or when our boss is not there, we know he's looking. Why? Because there's a camera there. So we know he will see us. Remember, our eyes are the camera on Yom al Qiyamah. Because everything we do will play right in front of us. Not only that, my hand will speak. My feet will speak. My tongue will speak. So if I want my tongue to speak good, let me speak good and let me speak the truth. Let me not speak of abusive words. Let me not abuse my other people, my other brothers and sisters. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a right. And that right has to be met. And that is what? That is to worship Him. And that is to obey Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what in, in the Quran? <clears throat> Prostrate to Adam. Right? Qala lil malaikadi. What? Ushdi li Adam. Li Adam. Is it to? Is it for the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or is it for the worship of Nabi Adam? This obedience, this usjud li Adam, this lamb is the lamb of obedience. Of obedience to Nabi, uh, Nabi Adam. The obedience of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad. Allah, Allah, so if I do not want to follow in the same footsteps as the shaitan, I should obey Allah, I should obey the Prophet, and I should obey those who have authority over me, and which is now, which is the Imam of our time, Ajal Faraj al Sharif. And I should, we should also pray for his safety. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala please keep him safe. Keep the Imam of my time safe. Keep the Imam of our time happy with us. <laughs> and make him and make us among his soldiers, Ya Allah. <laughs> Allah, Ya Allah, please do not take us from this earth. Do not take us from this dunya unless you are pleased with us, Ya Allah. <laughs> ya Allah, please give us the strength. And please give us, please give everyone the ability to go to Hajj. Ya Allah, please. Hasten the reappearance of our Jalallahu Farjum Wa Shaykh. Muhammad Wa